Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we have a guest and her name is Anne and welcome Anne to my YouTube channel. I will let her introduce herself. Yay! Yay! Hi everyone. As Winnie has said, I'm Anne, Jerry, and I'm happy to be in Winnie's lab. Welcome uh, to our YouTube channel, Anne. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Yeah. So tell us about yourself. How did you come to the United States? Oh, well, I came here through the green card, though I know many people might, when they see us young girls, they might be thinking that we came through sponsors. No, I did apply the um, DV lottery, that is diversity lottery, that's what I applied, and I was lucky, I won, I processed the, everything, and now I'm here. Wow, congratulations. Thank you very much. How was the process? How many wow. times did you apply for the lottery? Oh, that was the first, that was my first time. I had not uh, tried it before, so I just mm -hmm. applied. And then I was lucky, um, got selected. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. So how was the experience? How was your first uh, experience when you first got here? Oh, wow. First to start with, I started, I think, experiencing all the difference when I, I think when I arrived here, because mm -hmm. one thing, my phone reception, uh, the network, it wasn't receiving. So, and you know, when I was in the flight, I was using the Wi-Fi or when I was in the app, airport. So first experience is like, I couldn't call direct. So I had to, um, and I think my flight was late. I got late by two hours. So definitely the person who was supposed to come and pick me, uh, I had to try my own means to call him though. So I did borrow um, the airport phone and I called. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started experiencing, oh wow. So he came, he picked me, it was late at night, so I didn't got a chance to see much. But the following day, that's when I was slapped and slapped again by the weather because I came during. Summer. Right. It does that to everybody. The same thing happened to me when I first came here. I didn't know what was going on. It was car. It was towards the end of winter and then start of summer. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cold. And then the nights, the nights were kind of shorter. And then towards the beginning of summer, the nights were kind of shorter. So uh, somehow you find that uh, it goes up to like eight o'clock and 10 o'clock, nine o'clock, and still the sunlight is still there. And you're like, where am I? Oh, and then God. after that, the snow came and you were like, oh my goodness. I was so excited to see the snow, but then driving was crazy. Very crazy. I can imagine. You're yeah. There and it's snowing, especially me if you are from if you're living in a, some states that are they so there's not so much. So uh -huh. it gets crazy. Bearing in mind that you you came from Kenya where like when it's snowing, it's just kind of things. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so crazy. I can imagine. I'm sorry for that. Uh where I was and I was I didn't do much driving, so I was lucky to be like, oh, they used to drop me to work and pick me, so I didn't get a chance to drive during the uh, the snow season. Yeah. Wow. So, how do you like it? How do you like it over here as compared to when you were in Kenya? Do you see any much difference? Oh, wow. When you talk about uh, difference, there's so much difference. First, to start with, uh, the people here, the way they talk, the accent, and you'll be there speaking oh. or talking, and they were like, oh, 
Where are you from? We got you got an accent. Where is it from? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm from Africa. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is the accent. The second thing is food. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, our African food they taste much better. Yeah, uh, and so different. That's my opinion. They taste much much better, and. Mm-hmm. Another thing, it's about the politics, the religions. You just realize here that most people they don't go to church. When when you go to church, it's kind of empty. Things like that. There's so much difference. Even how people they talk here, the that kind of respect you find like even young people they don't respect their parents. They curse a lot. Yeah. They just speak like that. And another thing, use of drug, I think over here, it's so rampant. So mm-hmm. there's so much difference when you compare these and back home, there's a lot of difference. Yeah, it's pretty much, uh, yeah, it's kind of so different. That's so, right. like, did you ever, like, do you ever miss, like, uh, any kind of food? Are you asking? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Talk of Matura, talk of uh, samosas, talk of Gideri, talk of Mokimo, like, especially when you talk about the uh, the maize. Over here, they call them corns. And Corn, have, yeah. The soft one, the yellow one, and it's not I like, remember the first time when I, when, I, when I actually came here, I didn't like the corn, the sweet corn. I didn't like the sweet corn. And then my host was like, why don't you like the sweet corn? I was like, it's too sweet for me because you not know, like everything here it's too sugary too <laughs> sweet mm-hmm. I, was like, I don't like it but nowadays i like it like i eat it like every day <laughs> oh wow that's good <laughs> it took me some time to uh like fall in love with it mm-hmm. but i'm kind of used to it <laughs> yeah you see once you don't have the option you get used to because i remember personally i love milk so much and when I came mm-hmm. here, the milk was tasting like, it's not even like water. I felt like this milk ha- doesn't have any taste. And you see, back home, I was used to Brookside. So I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. But now yeah, I Yeah, Brookside was uh, my favorite. Brookside yeah. and the mind Biscuit, that's what I used to my, eat before. Oh, God. I miss that. <laughs> that was so, my favorite. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So... That's what it is. You miss this so much to miss, even the environment, even like during a winter or during summer. When you imagine back home, the weather is not that harsh to you. You can mm-hmm. walk, you can go. Like if there's rain, it's not that much, and if it's rain, you know you can handle it. But over here, yeah, <laughs> when it's extreme, right? Uh huh. And the culture shock. Of course I did. You know, like, as I said, I came during summer. And, you know, summertime, it's like, let's party, party, yeah. stop. First thing I was seeing this, the dressing code. Seeing mm-hmm. people walking with the book tops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the booty shorts. And oh, my God. And public, public places in the store. And I was like, oh, my God. wow. <laughs> Wow, wow. And me here, I'm in my jeans and my top. Maybe chiffon because I feel like it's hot. So I'm having my chiffon. And you're seeing people with the book top. And, and then they are, you, you're looking at them like, oh, wow. And then they, them, they are looking at you like, mm-hmm. look at this. You're wearing like that. Actually, yeah, like this let weather. me tell you something. Let me tell you what it mm-hmm. Nobody cares about what you wear. People mm-hmm. are just wearing like casual, casual wear, uh, mm-hmm. gym wear, and when you put on like those uh, uh, African clothes, it kind of strikes something. They just mm-hmm. want to find out like why are you wearing it, and that to me was kind of, you know, I don't want to attract attention. <laughs> so like it took me. I was like, oh, why did I even bring all this? So I ended up kind of putting on t-shirts so here people are just more casual yes, they so wear nice. t-shirts like it's a free world you just wake up and you want to 
stay the whole day on your pajamas even if you want to wake up crazy you know, you have no no one cares about you no one even care about your hair like your hair it's a like free world. World. you, you want to you want to work with your pjs no one will ask you you want to work with your body shots no one will ask you it's free. exactly exactly do that back home, do that back home. they'll be like oh. mm -hmm. What's wrong? Is she crazy? What's wrong with her? What is she trying to show us? Uh huh. So, yeah. Oh wow! I tell you, we've seen it, huh? Yeah. And we are still seeing, yeah. seeing and experiencing, and we are in. We are into it. We are going to experience even more. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. A lot more to come. Yeah. Yeah. So. I do clearing and forwarding company. I was there like I was doing the bookkeeping and mm -hmm. the accounting stuff. So I was there working with the company. Yeah, and it was good. Uh working in the morning, uh going to work, then at five I'm off. Then I go to school because I was doing evening classes from uh, six to nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah wow so did you when you moved over here do you, did you continue with the same career or do you have to change your career well when i came over here i just decided to change my career because first to start with when i was doing my become back in kenya uh, mm -hmm. i wasn't that much interested into it i was it looked like my heart was like when I look at some was attracted to something different. So when I came out, right. I was like, ah, let me do a switch. Uh -huh. and yeah. And then like over here, it's easy to get like the, when you get yourself into health um, department or careers, it's more, it's readily, I can say it's readily available. It's like, you can be fired today and tomorrow you wake up, you start a flying job and you get because yeah, so there are demand. everywhere, every mm -hmm. corner and very flexible. Yeah. You to work and with school and kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's become it's it's much easier when you're in I think when you're in health uh section, but I hear other people saying that they are doing okay even in other fields. But yeah, for me, I was like, let me let me try to pursue this one. So was it like, did you have like, was it your passion to pursue nursing, or did it just strike you when you first got here and you were like, let me just go do nursing, or how did it just start <laughs> for you? How was it well, for you? Actually, back in Kenya, I remember at one point my mama was trying to tell me to pursue nursing, and I was like. I'm not going to pass you that because you know back at home when especially when you go to public hospitals and you see what's going on there, we can't tend of to think no you don't you don't want to be even associated with there. And I remember at one point I was I used I was think I, I was sick so and when I will go to the uh, to the hospital I will smell that smell of drugs and there's certain things that they used to clean exactly like, that's how exactly I was. So I was like no I don't wanna. I don't want anything to do with the hospital. I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a nurse. I don't want to be even a contact. In the, I don't. I don't want that environment. Anything to do with hospitals? Yeah. Right. But when you came over here. It's different. Even when you walk in the hospital, it doesn't smell like a hospital. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So let me try this because the first job I got, I, I was working in a store in a in Home Depot store. Uh, but after that, I was like, let me try uh, getting myself into a uh, health uh, section. And mm -hmm. that's why I started uh, with the basic uh, nurse aid. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's so good. So Thanks. what was your first job experience? Tell us about that. How was your first job experience? As a nurse aid or as a in uh, as a um, sales who sales as a sales no oh. now the first time when you first uh got here and that was your first job i just want to know about it oh wow that was like it was a little bit hectic because 
this is your first job mm -hmm. I think by then when I when I got my first job, I think I had stayed here for less than two months. So one thing in uh, my circle was very small. So mm -hmm. to start with is an accent. When I'm speak when they're speaking to me, I have to be very 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 keen to hear what they're saying. And then when I'm speaking, to they can't hear nothing from me, and they say, "What are you saying?" They think like I'm talking a different language other than English. So that was the first thing. Uh, second thing, it's like, oh God, you, this home, if you know Home Depot, it's a big stop. Yeah. So <clears throat> you have your, the customers coming in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to guide them. There are some, some, some people over here, they have their resist. Some, they want you just open your mouth and you speak. And then they hear that accent of like, they think that we don't know anything. So I remember at one point there were these black people. Can you imagine black? They came to the store and they wanted help with carpet, with the florid products. Unfortunately, it was on a Sunday and I was the only uh, person in a flooring department there. So they came and I was there and I was telling them, uh, whatever they they did inquire and I was answering their question but because I had this accent they were like they looked me like that ha 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 she got an accent blah 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 like what so they didn't want me to help them so mm -hmm. they were like where well, is the store manager or what so I called the store manager and he came and so uh, the one they was saying that we want him to uh, the ones had different associate or the want him to serve them mm -hmm. then he was like uh she she knows much better than me because she deals with this uh department i only oversee the whole uh store so i don't specialize in anything so she's the only one who can tell you but because they already they had an, uh, an attitude with me i was like i'm not helping you guys yeah some places makes you feel like well, you ask yourself questions and you're like why did i even come here you know <laughs> you're like am i in the wrong place <laughs> well how did i even get here you know <laughs> i know that's yeah good. i've been in that situation oh, oh wow <laughs> really what happened yeah uh that's a story for another day <laughs> <laughs> let's finish this first <laughs> so I know that at some point while while you were doing your nursing, you somehow got the COVID. Yeah. How was? How did you? Uh, how, how did you realize that you had it, and how did you handle it? Oh. And wow. how was your experience? How was your whole experience from the first day to the to the last? <laughs> yeah. Walk us through that. <laughs> Well, that's, I know it's a long process because it took me a while. First yeah. to start with, uh, I got infected uh, last year in May. So uh, that means I was among the first people to get infected. Yeah. And so I was working in a nursing home in a facility. And mm -hmm. as usual, I was working, I think, in, a, in second floor. And it happened, I think, some of the red residents, I think two to three, had gone outside uh, for their um, for their routine checkup, and unfortunately, I think that the the condition was uh, worse, so they had to be hospitalized there for a couple of days. So when they came back, um, mm -hmm. I I think they had contracted the virus from the hospital, so we didn't know. We, as usual, as nurse said, we are doing our routine. We are going checking them helping them doing the um, uh the care the usual yeah activities. Uh -huh. right so uh after a while i remember i did work um it was that week i think my last my my second my second day in that week i think it was on a, on a wednesday something like that i we receive, I think, we receive a text uh, from from the nursing, the the HOD, uh, saying that we have some positive cases. Uh, some residents have 
tested positive mm -hmm. and so you need to come and have yourself uh, tested so um, i was like okay and the following day i think i was i was supposed to go to work so I was like okay i have to go to work and see uh what's happening see which floor has whether th these patients that are tested positive whether i did work with them but me knowing myself I was like i started feeling the butterflies in me but i was like i don't need i should i should be worried about anything so i went to work as usual try to i will try to ask them uh, who are these residents but due to HIPAA, they didn't tell us and so that night um the other nurse said when we were getting the report they said uh so and so when you're going there you need to uh observe these are uh, precaution contact precaution mm -hmm. contact and droplet and so right. and so like that so actually even it, it didn't even knock the, knock me that much because i remember even the nurse aide that was giving me the report my colleague uh she didn't even give me the details so and unfortunately or fortunately the patient that were the residents that were positive i was supposed to work with them that night so me, I went and I did my usual thing. I helped them, blah, blah, like that, um, the routine thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I was there. I wish you will see, you will see me donning, putting me, putting like double uh, gloves, uh, the masks, the, uh, the mask, the goggles, I don't know what, the gown, everything. I was donning, uh, donning, I mean. So I did that as usual and the following day in the morning I went back home but I wasn't feeling well. I was I was like I don't know why I don't know I was telling my colleague I don't know how I'm feeling. I feel like I'm sick or something weird. And I feel so tired, I feel like I got some muscles ache and the stuff. And so and then I was feeling like I'm having a cold. I was like if I continue feeling like this uh, in the evening, I'm not sure I'll be able to come. So I went back to, uh, when I went home, I tried to sleep. Uh, yes, I did sleep, but still around four, I was feeling tired and the start, mm -hmm. so, and I was having headache. So I called uh, the work and said, um, I might have to call off. So I did call out and uh, they said, uh, why are you? And I told them, I explained how I was feeling. Then they said, ah, you might need to come to work and get tested. So I did. I went to work. Uh, they tested me and they said, since you're having those kind of symptoms, you're having headache, you are, you're experiencing some little bit of pressure and all the stuff, uh, you might need to do, to quarantine yourself for 14 days and then after 14 days you come back you get tested like that then because it was still the beginning uh, for you to go back to work you had to taste you had to have two tests like negative mm -hmm. so that's what i did unfortunately for me it took a while so i did quarantine i think for 21 days and in the process you see then there was there was nothing that you could be given and the only advice they said is that when you go home you feel if you feel like you're having pain and all the stuff just take uh, the painkillers and try to avoid cold water ice mm -hmm. things like yeah that. yeah so um what i did we did order some limes lemon oranges fruits and I was boiling them. God. Did you take any vitamins? Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was taking the vitamin wow. pills. And then I was taking lots and lots of fluids. And I was warming. I was taking my fruits hot. I was boiling uh, ginger, garlic, mm -hmm. uh, lime. I was making those concussions. I was taking that. I was like, oh, God, I need to be safe. Unfortunately, I had a small baby, a young baby toddler uh he was but then he was just one year he had just turned a one year like within like less than a week because he was just like a year and two days when i tested positive mm -hmm. but unfortunately it is what it is 
I had to do my things. And I stayed with the COVID for like two plus months. Because I tested like three times after the first time, the second time I tested, I think I went to the hospital and the Mm -hmm. results came out uh, positive. I went back to job, I think after a month I got tested and the results came out positive. So the thing, the virus lingered in my system for quite a while. Wow. Mm. So was your baby also, did he have the the virus? Yes, he did. A uh, one year old also, so he did catch the virus. Yeah, and you know, by then they were saying that the children are not getting, uh, they're not yeah. contracting the virus. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in my case, I think, you know, how I think my baby was the second or the third. Yeah, he was among the first kids, well, like less than 10 kids to contract the virus. Mm-hmm. So, but when he tested, when because I remember we I, we went to Jewish hospital to test, and the whole family, we were all positive. I infected everyone. Oh so my the, goodness! Yeah. Oh my goodness! That is so sad. I know. So let me ask you: Given the fact that you and your baby had the virus, what were you scared? How was it for you? Well, I was um, I wasn't that much scared, but I was scared because I was scared for my baby because I was like maybe me I have immune. I'm not sure about my baby. Right. So, and I remember when I was when me having my headache and when I'm going up the stairs, I could feel the pressure in me, some little bit of chest pain. So I was like, me, I can feel that and I can be able to say, I'm feeling this and try to get, like I can drink the concussion, the limes and all the stuff. The baby, he can drink nothing because if you, you can give the baby hot water with the limes and all the mm-hmm. stuff, he won't drink. The baby, he can tell you that he's having headache or he's having chest or anything. So I was just praying to God and I'm so grateful to him because even when he was positive, when he tested positive, he wasn't showing anything, any sign. He was just... He had no sign. He was still active. Yeah, for those, for the first three months, I think, because he tested positive on uh, May 14th. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he was good. He didn't show no sign, nothing. He was a happy baby through... uh, july 16 because i think around july that's when my baby he started getting sick mm-hmm. and i being the first time mother i thought that he was having he was just teething and so i, I did call the hospital and try to have him uh go for his uh, appointment his well-being appointment mm-hmm. and so when i went to the hospital because his fever was very high they said since he's having a fever and fever is one of the symptoms of the COVID. Uh, we might right. have to, we might have to test him. And then said, but we tested. Uh, we, he was tested like two months ago, and he was positive. They said, yeah, but we have to test him since still uh, the co- uh, the virus is still around. So he got tested, and the following day we received uh, a call, and mm-hmm. was positive. And at that point, it was crazy because his fever, oh my God, let me tell you that one week, it was crazy for me. I was looking at my baby and I was just crying. Oh, yeah. No, I've been in the same position if I was you. Oh God, you're like, and then I was. Yeah, I'm glad he came out of it. You too came out of it. Uh, we. It's just the hand of God because so many people they have. Yeah, I remember I used to follow up on life. you and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know. Because, you know, at that moment, like, people are scared. You have to quarantine, you know, or you have to follow, like, pro- precautions and all that. And you can't go to work, you can't do what you're just confined mm-hmm. in one. You're just in the house and there's nowhere you can go. And it yeah. was crazy. It was bad. Crazy. Yeah, we thank God you came out of it. I thank God. So, like, what, what were your, do you have any side, side effects? What were your, your like, side effects? Oh, do you what? have, like, any adverse side effects? 
I didn't have adverse side effects, but the symptoms that I had were I, I had loss of smell and taste. That one was so strong the first week. Mm-hmm. I, could, I was cooking eggs, and you know how when you're frying eggs, how they smell? When you're frying on, onions, like onions, how they smell? I couldn't yeah. tell. I think at one point I was making fish, and everybody who walks in the house said, oh, you're making fish. I didn't even that's, know I was so that's making... how it was. Yeah. And even when I recover, wow. I couldn't smell. Even up to date, I still suffer from that. There are things that I can smell. There are things that I don't smell. And I'm like, it's okay. I think hmm. that's what we have to deal with. <laughs> wow. <sighs> that was crazy. With that, but I'm glad now you're okay. You can, you have, your smell is back, you know. No, the health is back and that's the most important thing. My smell is now back fully. There are things that I can smell. There are things that I can't smell. Now that's the side effect. So are you, are you uh, vaccinated or not vaccinated? Can, can I even dare not to? <laughs> can I even risk myself? Because people, some people... I'm that asking can... you because here, you know, like you have a right to make a decision. Like, are your medical decision to either get vaccinated or not vaccinated? So that's what I'm asking. Oh, wow. I'm fully vaccinated. And if circumstances force me to get a booster shot, I won't think twice. Anybody watching us and they're not vaccinated, what advice would you give them? People, I'm so mad. When it comes to vaccine, I know this is your right. But imagine this, imagine yourself like you are eligible to do to get the vaccine. There are people who are not eligible, like people like kids who are less than uh, 12 years of age. They are not yeah, eligible. Very young, very innocent. Yeah. We, we don't have or we don't have vaccine for them. So they can never get the vaccine until it's available. People who are sick, like who have uh, maybe they are going through chemotherapy or people who have been previously have had a reaction with a vaccine. Those people, those kind of people, they cannot get a vaccine. And do you there, you are eligible, you can get a vaccine. You are not getting, you are not going and getting the vaccine. You are not doing fair. This is, this is not fair. Yeah. You are risking people's life you're not please go that. get vaccinated please yeah, go, go get your vaccine get vaccine we want to see that card that you are fully vaccinated please get the vaccine yeah. mm-hmm. and so anybody out there and maybe you know young people who are out there in, uh, back home and maybe they want to come to the United States or, you know, they just want to go abroad anywhere. And what would you want to tell them? Mm, People that want to come here, I would just say, um, if you want to come here, it's, this is a blessing. One thing I can say, I I can't compare it in in terms of resources, in terms of education, in terms of medical, you I can never compare it with my mm-hmm. country. There are so many opportunities. Very so, many. School, yeah. work, there are jobs everywhere. Yes, yeah, so, yeah jobs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everything. But you still have to work hard yeah. to get everything. I mean, everything is there, but very expensive. So you still have to kind of work hard to That's get true. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the end of the day, don't think that you'll stay on your bed and then the, then the money will come from wherever, from your workplace or wherever, and come looking for you. No. No, no, no. You have to go, you out, have to go out there and get it. Because at the end of the day, you paid. You paid to work. And you paid according to hours. So don't think that you go, like, you see back home, we are like this. You're employed. And you know you are paid at the end of Monthly. the month. Monthly. This amount. So you can go to work and live. This over here it's not like that. When you walk, you go to work, you have to clock in somewhere to show that you're there. And then when you walk out, you have to clock out. So mm-hmm. you paid according to hours that you have worked. So 
if you feel like if you're there you young kids or young people out there and you feel like you want to party and you want to party day and night then just know you will party but your pockets will be empty exactly i like it i like the way you have just put it i want to say that i really appreciate to you inviting me for you to interview me i do appreciate and i just want to say hey subscribers and the viewers please subscribe, yes. subscribe to her channel she is the best she is the best and i believe she's having that you too. for you <laughs> thank you yeah, i know she has something in store for you she's she'll be giving you information after information and i know she's this kind of lady who has got the right place positive vibes we need to put some music some... <laughs> <laughs> you know me and you what we can do <laughs> i know <laughs> so, thank you so much and for... let me you before you pass out let me remind okay. you. <laughs> coming to midwest i know yeah mm -hmm. okay Thank you so much uh, for coming over to my show. And thank you so much for sharing your story about the COVID. It's not so many people who would, you know, open up to share mm -hmm. some personal details like those, especially the COVID, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for opening up, for sharing mm -hmm. with us and telling us how exactly it is mm -hmm. because you've been there and you know how it is. Mm -hmm. And you're such a brave girl. Thank you're you. such a brave and strong mom. And I love you so much and you know that. So keep going. And guys, kindly, this girl here, she's a, a very young lady. She's also in school. She has a very handsome son, but he's only two years old. So <laughs> don't start sending uh, some text to her. <laughs> he's only two years old. So she also has a, a YouTube channel. Mm. Just like me, we are babies. We are baby YouTubers. Yeah. So please. Go to her YouTube channel. Her name is just the way it's written there. Anjeri. She has very nice content. So kindly go and check her on YouTube and support her. Mm -hmm. She's very nice. You will like her. You will love her. Yeah, subscribe to her channel and support her the same way you're doing to me. And thank you so much. We still have more to come. And as you can see, we are a good vibe. And we are doing so great and I love you so much. And thank you so much for subscribing, continue subscribing. Don't forget to hit the subscription button on the corner. Once you hit it, it's gonna turn gray. Don't hit twice, it's just one time. It's gonna ring. <laughs> so just one time and that, that's enough. Thank you so much and I love you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>